Hello and welcome to Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen. Well, hello, Mrs. Farmer. Where did you come from? The house. The house? <laughs> yeah, it's just the house. You know what? It's November. It's finally nice out, too. You know what that means? That means the small game seasons have opened. Mm -hmm. That means deer season, gun season. By the time this airs, it may be gun season. Mm -hmm. And you know what? I got a taste for some venison this year. Me too. Now, any time that we do any of these wild game recipes and you don't happen to have quail or rabbit, well, right. you can switch it out. You can find domesticated rabbit fairly easily. Mm -hmm. And if you use quail, you can use chicken. You can use little Cornish hens. You yeah. can switch a lot of stuff out. But if you do happen to have wild game, each little thing has its own particular taste. Right. And you can do things to help with that seasoning to bring that taste mm -hmm. out and make it even better. Growing up as a kid in rural Mason in Carter counties, I was surrounded by, I always looked for the old timers who were yeah. out there, had their old double barrel side by side shotgun and you know, were still bringing food home to the table. A lot of these old fellows were from the depression era where they were sent out with a shotgun shell or two and expected to bring home game for the table. Right, that's dinner. Now you can imagine during these times there probably wouldn't have any deer around because the deer population was already depleted due to nobody was policing that. There mm -hmm. weren't really game wardens way back in that time. They started about that period of time. But once everything came back, we had this bounty of game around us. Now one of the things that, that we're working on, Department of Fish and Wildlife is trying to bring quail back. That's tough. Is it? Because of habitat. You know, everybody keeps a clean fence roll nowadays mm -hmm. and everybody keeps their yards clean and it's tough. But that doesn't make the taste of quail any less wonderful. That's right. They're delish. So, being that the numbers of quail are down, and hopefully on their way back, I think it was about 2008 or nine, somewhere around in there, I was down south quail hunting. And I remember having a recipe down there. And you know, when you use a, a cast iron, when you use a Dutch oven to cook quail or Cornish hens or anything, any kind of bird, it's really kind of hard. You really gotta put the heat on top to really brown that up. Right. So there's a fellow down there, and I think he's from Canada, but his name is Hugh Atchison, and what he, recommended doing was putting the brown on, mm -hmm. putting the braise on first. So you have that. And so this was an idea, and you know, learn a lot of stuff from a lot of different people over yeah. the years in bear camp and deer camp. So today, we've got a surprise recipe in the evening. But first of all, <laughs> let's get this little dish going here. And again, the important thing is to get the brown on first. So here's where we're gonna start, Mrs. Farm. We're gonna take okay. our little quail. Now, I didn't clean these. If I'd have cleaned them, I would have not split the breast open. You see, they're kind of pulled apart here. Right. See how that, that oh, yeah. I wouldn't normally do that. I would want to leave the skin on and the breast open. But being that we have some twine and we can kind of keep things together, let's take these onions okay. and cut them up long ways into like four quarters. Okay. So the first thing we're going to do is salt and pepper our little guys. You know, I remember when I was a kid, the sound of a Bob White quail was ubiquitous. Everywhere you went, you would hear them. <whistles> Everywhere, all the time. <whistles> and I would call them in. I had this little pattern and I would listen to them and I would, I would hear a male. <whistles> so I would wait 10, 12 seconds and I would call again. I would do the same thing he was doing. He'd get closer and closer and closer. Next thing you know, you see one come out of the field. There's see dinner. how I did that? Yeah, that was Can good. you walk like a quail? No, I can't. You do that well. No, I didn't shoot him. That would have been illegal because that was in the spring. So what we're going to do is just we're going to take these and we're going to brown them. I'm going to put them in some hot oil. All right. There's a little bit of pre-cooking going on here too. So people might ask, so how do you adjust your temperature when you're cooking over an open flame? You move the pan around where it's the hottest or coolest. You want to get more temperature on it, you pull it up right where the flame is the highest. If you want to back off a little bit, you slide it back. It's that simple. Normally, you could do this all in one dish. Mm -hmm. And we had a nice fire going just to kind of keep warm because it's going to get chilly out here. And I wanted to see the open pan. And you could do it this way. You can use two pans 
I don't mind cleaning two pans. Those look like you could eat them now. They look good. Oh, they do. They're not quite <laughs> done yet. We're going to finish them up. All Now let's dress their little selves out. So we're going to take this onion. Kind of stuff it in, in there. Here. Like that? Yep. Now we're going to tie his little legs up. That's just to hold him together and keep all that flavor in. Keep right. the onion in there. He's done. And again, our idea here. Now see, those have kind of sealed up. We want that chest cavity to stay together as much as we can. They look cute. Gotta do that. They, do. they, look, they cute. look cute. All right, so we're going to take some dates and we're going to pit them. Okay. And we're just going to cut those up into six or seven pieces. We're going to have these on standby. Now, you could use cranberries. I normally would use cranberries. But well, these are yummy. These are good for you. How do you want these cut? Just in fours? Yeah, just in, I don't know, five or six pieces. Okay. It's going to give it a little sweet, isn't it? It's going to give it a little sweet. I like that. All right, there's your dates. All right, now let's take our leeks. We're not going to waste those onions either. All right. Now leeks have a nice mild taste. They're not, they're not, they're oniony, but they're not strong. And these really complement this a lot. A lot of people use leeks when they're making quail. You want to cut these up a little bit finer. All right. So I have leeks, we got onions, and we have dates. It's date night. Oh, that's sweet. And we're going to drop these leeks and the rest of these onions. Now remember that our little quail were in here. And all those little pieces and all that fat from their skin is flavoring these as well. I'm going to take these over here in just a minute. Once they soften up just a little bit more, they absorb all the flavor that's in this pan. I'm going to take them over to my Dutch oven. And it's 350 degrees, which is? 17 and 8. 17 and 8, correct. Now, I guess this is a good time to tell you about our sister page. If you want to come over and see Cast Iron Cooking with Tim Farmer. Now, this is mainly a discussion page. So, the discussion is going to be, y'all, and I want recipes. We're going to post our recipes, but uh, we have a lot of folks signing up over there. It's our sister page. And also, let's remind you, if you have not become a member of Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen Facebook page, what would you do, Mrs. Farmer? I'd hit like. That's it? Yeah, that's, that's all you do. That's too easy. Okay, we're going to take a cup of chicken broth, and we recently got some apple cider. Now I'm going to take a little bit of apple cider and put it in there. I'm going to take my leeks off the fire. I wish you could smell these onions and leeks right now. It's ridiculous. They smell amazing. Isn't that something? Yes. That's all. You can't go wrong with that. So we're going to cover this up and let it get, let that cook down just a little bit. Then I'm going to drop in my bouquet garni. All right, now our carrots. Mm -hmm. When Natalie was little, <laughs> our granddaughter, she would not eat carrots. That's right. But she would eat karoots. Because you made that up. <laughs> what's, what's karoots, Papa? Oh, it's this wonderful thing that you just got to try. Just try one bite. Right. Oh, Grandpa, those are good. Well, how couldn't they be? This is, a, <laughs> this is I just, one time I think we were having liver, then we had duck. They mm -hmm. really, really accessorized. Right some wild game mm -hmm. and, and a lot and tonight's that kind of deal. You just take carrots and we boil them. Mm -hmm. And butter. Mm -hmm. Some brown sugar. Our maple syrup. That we made, that's right. That's karoots. That's karoots and let it cook together. How can you go wrong? That's a karoot. <laughs> boil your, boil your uh, uh, carrots ahead of time because uh -huh. Because when you, when you get everything coming together like this, mm -hmm. you don't want to sit around and wait. That's right. the great thing about cooking outside, is you're, we're always mentally prepared to have everything come together at once. Right. Because if you got your main dish ready and you're waiting on your sides and they're going to be a half hour, you got trouble. Mm -hmm. Here's our reveal. Oh, wow. Oh, me? You smell that. That looks amazing. Now, our little bouquet garni, which is a fancy way of saying a bunch of weeds tied together. Yeah. You smell that time. You oh, smell wow. that time coming out of there. This is what the finished product looked like. Now, aren't you glad we browned that in that skillet? Yeah, they look wonderful. Isn't that beautiful? Let's eat. All right, first, let's take a bite of our... Wow. Mmm. <laughs> That's so good. Look at that leaking. Those are good. I love leeks. They're wonderful. A little bit of rice. You can have a karoot. That is a beautiful thing. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you what, it's indescribable. It's subtle. That's but the good. flavor that each animal has. I'm going to have a karoot. 
Now, something you do to your rice, which mm -hmm. I like. For texture, you put some almond slivers I in did. there. I did. I put like a lot. That. Yeah, I put some carrots and celery today. Sometimes we put, put in cranberries. cranberries. We yeah. put them in there. I love That's these leaves. You know, there's hardly any food in the world that I won't try. I remember when That's I was true. riding around here doing some work on the farm, and a little song was going through my head. I was writing for Country Kitchen. Yeah. And uh, the whole concept of this thing came to me. And one thing that never sounded too appealing was chicken feet. Because mm -hmm. they say you are what you eat, and I don't want to be thought of as chicken feet. That's right. But not too long ago, we went to the stockyards. Mm -hmm. And uh, we sat down and met a bunch of people, and somebody was, they said they could sing every word of the right. song, somebody's daughter. <laughs> this guy comes up and he says, my wife fixed chicken feet. I said, does not. Yeah. Now I know that, that in a lot of Asian recipes they have them, mm -hmm. but I know where those feet have been. Yeah. Around other chickens. You'll try them, won't Yeah. No, no, no. But he said, my wife is from the Dominican Republic, and she makes those. I thought, does not. He says, does so. I said, does not. He said, does so. Mm -hmm. That went on for an hour and a half. That's right. Two hours later. I finally said, prove it. So guess what? She's you want to try some on. chicken feet? I will watch you try it. How's that? <laughs> I'll try it. I know Doesn't you will. mean I'm going to eat them every day, but That's I'm going right. to try it. Let's go, let's go up to the cabin and see what we got. All right, we moved from the wagon, we cooked our quail, to the cabin. And here's Clara. <laughs> How you doing, Clara? Good. What do now, I do? Now, I knew, I'm doing good. I knew this day would come. They say you are what you eat. Yes. So I don't eat chicken feet. I just rhymed. <laughs> I didn't say I wouldn't eat them. And you know what? When I met your husband, mm -hmm. and we were at the stockyards, and I met your husband, he says, you know, my wife was a little bit offended. You know, you said you wouldn't eat chicken feet. I said, no. How does she cook them? And then he starts telling me about cilantro and peppers and all this wonderful oregano. I thought, bring it on, I'll try them. I'm not changing my song though. No, okay. Because it rhymes. <laughs> you sure, you should change. But Clara, tell me, how do you begin? Okay, now I saw you, Okay, this is what your average chicken foot looks like. He's got, he's got toenails, so on and so forth. You clean those up. You cut those off. Yes. And what's the next step after you cut the? Okay, I'm gonna wash it. I got only ten here, so I don't need too much, because then they get so dry. What is your water? I need water? water. Yeah. Let me just pour some in there. Yeah. Water and vinegar. Yeah. So you, said, I'm starting your husband and you. There's, there's kind of a base to a lot of recipes, and you said it was. And what did you call it again? Uh, garlic. Sofrito. Oh, sofrito. Sofrito, which yeah. is garlic, cilantro, yeah. and. I uh, use bell pepper. And bell pepper. Yeah. So that's kind of your trinity. This is exactly. kind of your. That's Dominican thing. Like we use that for everything. No kidding. Yes. So that's when I take a whiff of this cooking. When I smell this, kind of that's that's going to be the Dominican base for a lot yeah. of things. I like it. Okay. You see. And then I um I use oregano, a little bit of um, black pepper. Black pepper? Yeah. For my sofrito, I also use some salt. Okay. And what else? Yeah, that's it. Oh, that smells good. Yeah, that's sofrito. Oh, I need a little bit of water, right? Cause, a little um, bit of water in yeah. here? Yeah. And tell me when. Okay. A little bit more. A little bit more. Okay, I think it's enough. Okay. Yeah, here. Put that on there. That's Nikki's fancy smancy plastic chopper. There you go. Isn't that neat? Where you got this from? You need one of those. I think I need one of those. Christmas right around the corner, you know. Okay, I think it's fine. Oh, wait. Yeah. Okay. Let me set it here. You see, like, once I have to eat the washes, there is enough, right? Just a little bit, not too much. Yeah, adobo. It's a uh, Sazon Goya. That helps with the color. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Did you, did you smell this? Or? Yes. Yeah, that's that a frito. Oh, man. Okay. Canola oil. Yeah. We use oil and a little, little bit of um, white sugar. Okay, it's gonna burn a little bit, so that I wanna use that for the color. So you put those in a hot skillet. So who taught you how to make this? Your grandmother? Yeah. My grandmother, my mom. Yeah. Would you mind to just lower a little bit? Lower the fire? Yeah. Absolutely. Now I want to use this. Go like that? Yeah. Okay. 
Now those, they're kind of swelling up. Mm -hmm. So that means more to eat. Mm -hmm. Okay. More so, chicken feet to eat. Yeah. Let me do this. Let me and do the rest of your sofrito mm -hmm. and flavorings. Yeah. All these spices and everything that you just did, you could do this with a lot of stuff. You could do this with a good cut of chicken. Why couldn't you do this with just chicken strips? <laughs> I do it. That's what I'm saying. And I use also chicken legs. Yeah. Chicken breast too. Now that's been cooking, what, maybe 15 minutes, something like that? Yeah, I would say 20 minutes. 20 minutes? Mm -hmm. Now I see that they've kind of swollen up and, and they're starting to actually split the skin. So they're, they're, you, you don't want to eat them while they're still hard. You yeah. Want to, you want to soften them Tender, up. Tender, like. So what's the next step? I know we're getting close here. Yeah, because uh, since you see that I um, I was soft on the salt, like uh, I wasn't like a too, too much salt, so this here is going to give bullion. it. bouillon. Yeah. Gotcha. We call that caldo de pollo. You know, it's chicken. Chicken feet. So this here is when I give like the last, it's like, the last little bit. Taste. Um, so, what is my tomato paste? I will use this for uh, color. Gotcha. Yeah. But I don't see so this is just the last steps here. Mm -hmm. And that make this soft, like I mean, the, um, sauce like a thicker. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, let me just throw that in there. Oh, okay. so that goes in at the last. Yeah. Bear pepper, onions again, and. Um, the tomato. Toss that around a little bit. Yeah. So we're going to leave that there for about five more minutes. Anybody in the right mind who is standing here and smelled what I smell would have no problem trying that. That is amazing. It's so good. I'm not even like bragging, but I. That's really good. It's good. That's almost silly good. If you try with white rice, you will love it <laughs> even more. And like I say, that's what I eat when I was a little. Do I have to rewrite my song now? I think so. I thank you so much for coming out and being with us today. You're very welcome. And I'm thank a you little for bit chicken feet. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much. Yeah, you're very welcome. Try some grub you've never tried before. That's How about right. that? You know, we've got a lot of great <laughs> recipes coming up, all kinds of new stuff coming up. Um, hopefully, very soon, it's time for some venison. Yes, it is. You know, we've been putting lambs in the freezer, and we've been putting calves in the mm -hmm. freezer, and all kinds of pig. Right. But you know what? We've kind of stepped back just for a while, because I took a break from Kentucky Field. That's right. There's nothing that I ever wanted to do more than hunt or fish. I did it so much that I took a little step back, you have. and I wanted to make sure when I came back, I wanted to really be able to do it. <laughs> And guess what? You're excited, I'm aren't you? I'm I know ready. you are. I know you're so, ready. So deer season is upon us. It's time to start cooking some of that deer meat. And you know what? When we cook it, remember, if you don't like venison or can't get venison, use beef. Right. There's always an alternative right. here. So Mrs. Farmer, believe it or not, it was half our show. It was. So that means we have to say goodbye and uh, let some folks know that we do have a brand new show coming up next week. Mm -hmm. And we got the Christmas show right around the corner, which is sold out. But man, that's going to be a whole lot of fun. Be watching for that because that's going to be on... We're going to premiere that on Christmas Eve. That'll be nice. This is going to be a cool deal at the castle. Now, let's talk about YouTube. After we air our show on television, we post our shows to YouTube. Don't forget to click subscribe. That way, anytime anything new comes out, you'll be the first to see it. If you wanted a recipe, you want to see us running around like chickens, doing all kinds of fun stuff, where would you go, Ms. Farmer? I go to timfarmerscountrykitchen.com. Would you? Yes, I still do. Gazillions of recipes there, how-tos. Remember, since our half hour's up, it's all about good times. Good friends. And super good eats. You want to plow in there now? I do want to. I'm ready to eat more. We'll see you next week for a brand new Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen. To order a cookbook, please call 502-319-0487 or email timfarmerck at gmail.com.